as just the way he is, despite our shortcomings, despite our shortcomings, despite our shortcomings, despite our apparent failures, despite the fact that we missed church or that we didn't pray or that we didn't read our Bible yesterday morning, he still loves us because that's just the way he is. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. It's time for the Word of God. Amen. If you all could stand to your feet, grab your Bible. If you need one, stick up your hand. Grab one from a neighbor, share. Our ministry technicians can give you one as well. We're going to be in the Old Testament book of Genesis this morning. The beginning. If you need to find the book of Genesis... You need to be saved. <laughs> it's right in the front, family. It's right in the front. First book of the Bible. We're going to be in Genesis 9 this morning. Genesis 9. We're going to start at verse 18. We're going to have our confession up on the screen. I will begin with you all, but I will drop out. Please continue until the end, and then we'll get to the word. Are we all there at Genesis 9, verse 18? Amen. Anybody need a second? Say, hold on. hold on. I got you. I got you. Let's all get together on one accord. Thank you for the trio of men this morning that sang. Amen. 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 There's something about when things get disrupted of their normal course of action that forces us to be in a place of worship and not spectation, but expectation to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise for ourself amen. but i thank god that they were here this morning to lead the charge amen, amen. are we all together yes. all right let's start with our confession it says this this is my bible the word of god today the word of god will transform me i am who it says i am I will never be the same. In Jesus' name, amen. In the Old Testament, Genesis 9, starting at verse 18, says this. The sons of Noah who went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. These three were the sons of Noah, and from these the people of the whole earth were dispersed. Noah began to be a man of the soil, and he planted a vineyard. He drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. And Ham, the father of Canaan, saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. Then Shem and Japheth took a garment, laid it on both their shoulders, and walked backward and covered the nakedness of their father. Their faces were turned backwards, and they did not see their father's nakedness. Now when Noah awoke from his wine, he had a hangover, and he knew what his youngest son had done to him. He said, Cursed be Canaan. Cursed be Canaan. A servant of servants shall he be to his brothers. He also said, Blessed be the Lord, the God of Shem. And let Canaan be his servant. May God enlarge Japheth and let him dwell in the tents of Shem. And let Canaan be his servant. Can you say amen? amen. If you all reach across the aisle, the theme for this message, if I might put something on it, is who's covering the father? Who's covering the father? This is the first part that if the Lord allows will be a two-part series, which is called The Consequences of Not Covering the Father. Let's pray. Father, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart are pleasing in your sight. My Lord, my rock, and my redeemer. Lord, I pour myself out. I have prepared what you've told me to prepare. God, let the word go forth and receive the people or have the people receive it in their hearts and in their minds and in their spirit. God, this is my prayer in the name of Jesus. And we all said, Amen. Amen. Who's covering the Father? 
the patriarchy is always of significance in the Bible. Any time that you wanted to identify someone, it was always by their line, which began with the fathers. Even in Matthew 1, when we trace the genealogy of Jesus, we are sent through 14 and 3 generations of fathers. In the Bible, men fathered nations. When a man settled in his family in a particular area, that area took the name of the man. So it might be in the land of Jimmy or the land of Harris. It might be Randall's Town, not Baltimore, not that part, but it may be Randall's Town or the area of Adrian. Are you all following? Fatherhood was held in high regard. And truth be told, it's still incredibly important. There's no one more influential in how a man um, frames who she, he should grow to be in the role of a father and in a husband than his father. Amen. For Amen. females, there is no one more powerful and influential than the father when determining and, and internalizing what it is to be a husband and what it is to be a father. Science has also proven that even when it comes to children's food choices, they're more apt to follow their father's line based on how adventurous and, and how curious he is about trying new foods that the children will follow suit of the father. I'm here to tell you the fathers matter. Amen. The fatherhood Amen. is important. Amen? Amen? Yes. The man is the God-ordained leader. By man's submission to the Lord, that qualifies him to lead our families. There is a weight placed on fathers from God that is unlike anything else. Our fathers matter. Our story finds us in the aftermath of the weight of Noah. What it is that God had called him to do in his time. We're, we're coming in on the tail end of that. And I'll do a quick synopsis for those who may not be familiar with the story. The Bible records that Noah was a man who walked with God. That he was upright. That he was righteous. And what had happened was they had gotten into a point in history that the world would begin to turn evil. That the people were not honoring God. They had rebelled against him. And God said, okay, I see what you all are doing. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to flood the earth. I'm going to destroy mankind and every living thing in creation. And you know what? I'm going to start over. Amen. But then he saw Noah. And he said, this man who walks with me, who talks with me, who is upright in nature, I'm going to use him to start over. So he called Noah, called to him told him to build an ark, something that would be city blocks wide. This is a huge, this is not a rowboat. We're not talking about a 20-foot yacht. This is a cruise liner. He called him to build this, and he said, what I need you to do is understand that I'm going to send 40 days and 40 nights of rain to the earth in order to flood it. So what I need you to do is after you get done building this boat, I need you to get your sons and their wives and also two of every living animal and get onto the boat before the flood starts. You will witness the destruction of creation. You will see all of these things unfold, and you are going to be on the boat for quite some time. Noah, being an upright man and being righteous, he listened to God, and he said, okay, I got it. So he does all this stuff, and just as he's finishing and he gets all the animals on the boat, the rain comes. Forty days, forty nights. The water got so deep, the Bible records that the tallest mountains on the earth were 22 feet below water. The earth was flooded. Noah, from his vantage point on the ship, watched the destruction of creation. He saw living people drown. He saw animals' buildings destroyed. He saw all of this. Yeah. This was Noah's weight. So we find ourselves in Genesis 9, after the flood subsides. It's been months at this point. By the time the rain comes, 40 days and 40 nights, and then the water dissipates, it has been months. He's on a boat with animals for months. He's around the same six people for months. This is not Royal Caribbean. We are we're talking about living in Washington National Zoo for some months in close proximity. I'm not quite sure, but I'm pretty sure it's stuck. 
This is the weight of Noah. So in Genesis 9, verse 18, it talks about them getting off the ship. And it said, the sons of Noah who went from went forth from the ark were Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Ham was the father of Canaan. And these three were the sons of Noah. From these, the people of the whole earth were dispersed. Now we credit Abraham with being the father of the faith, right? Noah is a father of different sorts. Noah, his line is the descendancy of all who would ever be. Because you remember the entire creation was wiped out. So literally with Noah and these three boys come all of us. So it's, it's a weight. And so it says that Noah became a man of the soil. And he planted a vineyard. And he drank of the wine and became drunk and lay uncovered in his tent. In order to properly set the context for what I believe God has for me to deliver, we need to understand that fathers have flaws. I know we like to puff up our chest, men, and, you know, this is just an encouragement from me to you. Don't take it the wrong way. But we all have flaws, and we have trouble sometimes kind of explaining it and feeling it because we're not feelers. We're doers, and, you know, we got this guard up around us. But we have to acknowledge that we have our flaws. Ladies and people who aren't fathers, I need you all to understand that fathers have flaws. We're not perfect. It may have been a bad temper. It may be that your father wasn't kind. Maybe he wasn't there. If he was there, maybe the relationship wasn't everything that you needed or even expected. But he had his flaws, and it doesn't make him less of God's man because of that. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. <laughs> Noah laid drunk. This brother wanted to drink so bad, he planted a vineyard, and he <laughs> made the wine. There was no 7-Eleven down the street. You know, Lucky's wasn't open to get a steel reserve. He, there wasn't that. Y'all know what steel reserve is. Y'all know what steel reserve is. But that's the kind of weight that he had. So it was, it was a bit of a, a flaw. Noah turned out, got drunk, and fell out his clothes. It was a flaw. It was him. He was naked. We can't deny it. But with the weight that God had called Noah to do came the weakness that needed to be covered and not exploited. With the weight of what God called Noah to do came the weakness, the flaw that needed to be covered and not exploited. It's so easy to throw him under the bus. It's so easy to say that he did this and he did that. It's so easy to do that. But who's covering the father? We got a baby daddy bullying complex in our culture. But... While you're throwing him under the bus, who's covering him? Noah was handling his release the right way. I might, I might get in trouble for this. I didn't expect Pastor to be here. I was hoping to maybe have to deal with this a week from now. But Noah had a rough couple of months. Right? We've already talked about that. He received a word from God that the world was going to be wiped out. God told him to make a boat. He saw the destruction. Da -da 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 -da. And he got to a point that it was all over. And he kind of let his hair down for a second. He planted the event. He planned this party. He planted his vineyard. He knew he was going to make wine. He didn't say, you know what? I'm thinking about making grape jelly. With <laughs> no. Noah knew what he was going to do. We all need a coping mechanism, but please, sir, to my fathers and the men in this place, when you need to do what you need to do, please do it in your tent. I know it's not popular and we're supposed to be perfect and Jesus-loving people and we don't need to drink and we don't need to, you know, to deal with stress and this, that, and the other. But you know, to the fathers in the place, ladies, you can hold your ears. Just do what you do, but do it in your tent. Your ability to be covered lies in direct correlation with the number of eyes that are on you. And if the number of eyes of those who would expose you outnumber the eyes of those who would cover you, you're going to find yourself in trouble. That's why you can't go out to the club and do what you want to do and cut a monkey. In this day and age, there is a cost to doing that. There's cameras everywhere, people who would undermine you, who don't even know you. 
which he's so quick to snap a picture and post it. And little do you know that that's the third cousin of so-and-so who you're dating and sees you up on the girl in the club doing what you do because you just needed a release. Please, sir, do it in your tent. Now, this is not a co-signing on crazy. This is not a sanctioning of debauchery or whatever else. Please understand that you have to be walking with God the way that Noah was walking with God. You had to do some work for him. Don't say you had a bad day at work and you need to go cut a monkey and end up naked in the streets. Wow. Hmm. Wow. Find your safe place. Find the people in your life that love you enough to cover you. Because we all have the weakness that will drive us to the point of being left naked. Are you all tracking with me? Keep your circle tight. Stay low and don't be hot. That's what we used to say. You're being too hot. You're being, you're being hot, Slim. You're being hot. But Ham, in verse 22, it says... Ham, the father of Cain, and saw the nakedness of his father and told his two brothers outside. It says that he saw and then he went and told. Now, was Noah blameless? No. But Ham had a choice. Do I cover my father or do I run tell that? Do, do I acknowledge that Noah is not perfect? And do I cover him anyway? Because truth be told, I'm not perfect. Yeah. Ham had his stuff too. We don't hear too much about him in scripture because quite honestly what this is is quite enough. We don't need to hear anything else from him. But we have a choice to make. You know, I'll use the example overseer, you know, poured himself out a little bit the other week when he talked about the depression and everything that comes on, on Monday after preaching a word and being in the space that God has called him to be. And quite honestly, that is leaving him a little naked. And we as his congregants, as his spiritual children, have a choice at this point. We can spend Monday as he's warring, covering him in prayer, bathing his name in the word of God. We can do that. Or we can call one another on Monday and be like, did you hear what Pastor said on Sunday? We have a choice with what we do. If I had to liken it to something we do nowadays, you know, Ham went out and you know, told his brothers real quick and tried to spread the word. You know, we throw stuff up on social media any day of the week because it's convenient and we can do that, not knowing that we could have just taken the time to cover them instead of exposing their weakness. Verse 24 says this. When Noah awoke from his wine and knew what his youngest son had done to him, he said, Cursed be Canaan. Did you hear what he uh -huh. Uh -huh. Who was in the tent? Ham. Uh -huh. Noah said, Cursed be Canaan, his son. It's important to know, family, when we fail to cover the fathers in our life, that it's never us or the father that suffers. It's the children. The children always catch the brunt of what it is that we're doing. When we're, when we're laying out the father, when we're cussing him out, when we're talking ill of him and the children are present, they're building a perception of their father that's based in weakness that we all have because no one's covering him. This is not to take away the truth of what Noah did. It's not to take away the truth that he may have not been the best person, that he had his flaws. But what do we gain and what do our children gain by exposing that to them? My father and I, he's been dead for 15 years. God rest his soul. We didn't have the best relationship. But when my babies asked about their granddad, I said he was a good man. He did this with me. And I remember this time we used to do that. And it's all the good stuff. Why? Because I want them to build up a positive image of men in their life. The truth is the truth. The truth is the truth. But I gain nothing by running his name through the dirt. Nothing. We're hurt, and we're, and I, guys, I get it because I've been there, but we cannot continue to perpetuate this awful cycle, this toxicity, this dysfunction for our generations. Yes. We have an opportunity to make it stop with us yes. because the children suffer. Amen. 
Numerous times in scripture we hear God say through the prophets that he visits the iniquity of the fathers on the children. Children suffer when we don't cover the father. So Ham had four boys. I'm going to do a little historical genealogy study for you all right quick. It may not preach well, but it'll lend to the point that I'm trying to prove that we must cover our fathers in this day and age. The curse went to Canaan, but the crazy thing about Canaan is that he's recorded in Bible as being corruptive. All that means is that he has a, a larger-than-life personality, a larger-than-life uh, draw in which he can corrupt those around him. So as you'll see, though the curse went to Canaan, the rest of his brothers felt it also. Even though the curse was pronounced on him, we're going to walk through it a little bit. Y'all bear with me while I do a brief history lesson. If you're into the history channel, you might, you might like this right here. So first, Canaan. Two clans of his lineage were the people called the Jebusites and the Amorites. If you've read your new uh, the Old Testament, you've probably heard these names before. Now, they participated in the spreading out of the family through exploration, through conquest. But what's interesting is that though they established all these lands, they lost them. Mm. Yeah. During the exodus of the Israelites from Egypt, God decided to give the Israelites their lands as a pledge, as a promise to them. You've heard it called the promised land, or he promised the land of Canaan to the Israelites. So they lost their lands and they were dispersed again into the surrounding region. These are Canaan's, this is Canaan's line. They took up residence in a city called Jerusalem, but they couldn't get too comfortable because after a few years, a king named David showed up on their door with the whole nation of Israel behind him and they conquered the Jebusites. Once again, dispersing them into the wilderness. This is Canaan's line. Finally, David's son Solomon ended up enslaving them to build the temple. The Amorites had the same fate as their lands were also dedicated to the line of Abraham during the Exodus and they too were enslaved by Solomon. This is how we start the curse of Canaan because of Ham's failure to cover his father. The second son was Cush. His line didn't fare so well either. Cush would ultimately become what we know today as Ethiopia. The most well-known scripture reference of their faith is Isaiah 43 and 3 and it's God telling Israel that he's given Egypt for their ransom, Cush and Seba in their stead, which simply means that God has made provision for the nation of Israel, God's people, that is. He's made provision for them through the sacrifice of these two people groups. Again, Canaan's yeah. line. Another one of Cush's sons was Nimrod. I know that sounds funny. Get your laugh out now. Nimrod was his name. He's recorded as being a mighty man. His kingdom was vast. It started with Babel. And if you know the Old Testament, Babel was a town where they endeavored. They were incredibly smart, incredibly ingenuous. And what they did was they started and decided to build a great city and a tower to reach all the way up to the heavens in order to make themselves equal with God. God saw what they were doing, and if you know anything about God, he's not too keen on sharing the spotlight with anybody. So he said, you know what I'm going to do, these smart people who think they're so suchy much? I'm going to confuse their language, and I'm going to disperse them over the earth. That's where we get the term battling from, because God sent confusion and chaos into their midst because we had a problem in not covering our father. He also built Nineveh, Nimrod that is. Who's heard of Nineveh? Nineveh was a great city in its time, so much so that it would take you three days to walk from one end of the city to the other, to the other end. If you remember the story of Jonah, God sent Jonah in order to preach to these people to repent and to get right with God because they had again fallen off. They had again fall short of the glory of God. They've done all these things. So he sent Jonah. So Jonah preached to them and God spared the city. Now his work was successful, but unfortunately in 450 years, God described to destroy the city anyway. This is the line of Ham through Canaan. The third son, I'm almost done. The third son, we have Egypt. Now, Egypt had a few sons as well, but I'd like to draw your attention to just one of them. And his name was Kasluhim. Yes, I had to look up how to pronounce that. Kasluhim. Mm -hmm. He is the line that the Philistines came from. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. 
And most of us are familiar with the Philistines. The nation of Israel warred against them for what seemed like forever. And the most famous account of the Philistines was the battle of David and Goliath. Now, Goliath was the Philistine of Philistines. He was the greatest warrior of the day. And scripture records that David showed up on the scene when they were in the midst of the battle. The nation of Israel against the Philistines. And he said, who is this uncircumcised Philistine? Looked him up and looked him down and killed him with a single shot with his slingshot. Went up, cut off his head. And he was pronounced king. He was celebrated. The Philistines, although they suffered a loss then, they went to continue on. But ultimately God pronounced his judgment again against them in Ezekiel 25 and 16. It says, Behold, I will stretch out my hand against the Philistines and I will cut off the Sherathites and destroy the rest of the sea coast. I will execute great vengeance on them with wrathful rebukes. Then they will know that I am the Lord when I lay my vengeance upon them. These are the words from God to the Philistines from the line of Kasluhim, son of Egypt, son of Ham, who failed to cover his father. The final son of Ham was put. I don't need to go into too much detail. You all see the pattern here. But put is what we would know in northern Africa as the area of Libya now. Now, if you know anything about that country, they have been war-torn for generations in a constant state of poverty, power struggles, corruptness. This is put. Now, those people were ultimately destroyed by the nation of Babylon and King Nebuchadnezzar because put was from the line of Egypt, who was the son of Ham, who failed to cover his father. Not covering the father family has consequences. And I can't help but wonder what would have happened if someone had been covering my dad. If someone had been covering your dad. What would have happened? How could it have been different if we would take the time to stop exposing the nakedness, the weakness of our fathers and start covering them despite their weaknesses? Despite their shortcomings, despite the pain that they may have caused us, what if we started praying for them right now? What if we just, what if we just went to the Lord on their behalf instead of asking God to curse them because of what they did to us? So often, and the feelings are real, so I know that I'm walking a tight line right now, and I, I, I get it. But so often... We are so quick to throw them under the bus because of the hurt that they caused our hearts and how we've never been changed. And I encourage you, just as Christ forgave your shortcomings, let us forgive our fathers. Let us offer forgiveness for his sake, yes, but for ours, for our children's sake, for the generations hundreds of years from now that will not know dysfunction. They will not know the pain because it profit us not to have them know, to have them experience, to have them walk in that, this curse on their shoulder that they don't quite know where it came from. It's because somebody wasn't covering their great, 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 great grandfather. And we succumb to the pressure of the culture. As Christians, we have to be beacons of light in the midst of that. We have to take a step back and say, yeah, I see you down in him. I see you talking bad about him. And yes, it was his fault. Noah was drunk. Noah was naked. But Ham had an opportunity to cover him. And I can't help but wonder that Ham's line, Canaan's line, Egypt's line, uh, Put's line, and Cush's line would have been entirely different if Ham would have done what Ham should have done and covered his father. And I hear you that I don't know your story, and I don't know what he did, or I never knew my dad. You don't know my baby's father. You don't know him. I do know him. I do. I do. And even if I did, God knows. Amen. Amen. And he preordained your life for what it is. He knew that on Father's Day in 2018, you would still be wrestling with some of these feelings and some of these hurts and some of these pains and it doesn't make them irrelevant. I just want to tell you that. But if we start covering, you'd be so amazed that the work of God can continue in a man's heart and then it can actually start in an instant. In the twinkling of an eye, God can turn a heart. Yes, he can. 
God can move. Yeah. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, I will draw all men. Start taking it to the Father about your Father. Let Christ do the work that He's done in you. Because you all are all in here on a Sunday. You all are converted, changed, and on your path towards greatness. Why can't we wish that for our fathers? Why can't we just lift them up? And I got a, a, a pet peeve that we start to do, and I don't want to step on toes, but let's just start covering the fathers and stop taking this day away from them. Amen. Let's stop taking Father's Day away from the fathers, despite the circumstances, despite it. And I know you're a single mother, and I know that he wasn't around, this, that, and the other, and I'm going to celebrate Father's Day. No, let's stop changing the focus on those who have done wrong to help gird up those who are doing right. To the faithful fathers, don't disqualify them because of the unfaithful few. Amen. There are men in this place and in all of our lives that are doing it. Amen. That are doing it. Yeah. That are raising yeah. families. Just And I'm sorry, i got to do it. Men of color that are just doing it. Yeah. Yeah. But we let the media tell the story. We let angry mothers tell the story. We let everybody else tell the story. But Ham didn't cover his father. Cover the fathers. This doesn't change the fact that they're flawed. It may not even change them. But what we have is the peace to know that we've done everything in our power by taking it to God through Jesus Christ about our dads. We have the power to say that I submitted and that I threw them on the altar as much as I could. Through prayer, through supplication, through intercession, I just want you to bless my father. I just want you to help him find his way. Help him find the joy that I found. Help him find the community that will support him. And men are alone a lot of times. We are lone wolves by design. Even when we get together with our boys, it's like six words that we speak between three hours. Yeah, you doing good? Yeah, I'm good, man. What you doing? I'll take another Hennessy. And then we just <laughs> catch that game. I think LeBron's better. This is me. I just think LeBron's better. <laughs> so we don't have a community. And I'll encourage everybody in here, next time you see the men's ministry is having something, get your get yourself. <laughs> get all yourself. <laughs> and get in the place. Amen. 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 Let's do. Let's let's break the chains. Let's break the, the bondage that this yeah. generation seems to be in. And it's not going to happen by talking about basketball and LeBron James and Michael Jordan. Yeah. Let's talk about Jesus. Amen. Let's pray together. Bro, you doing all right? Oh man, let's pray. Yes. And that's what we get in the house of God. That's what we get as believers. We come into this place so that we can cover one another. And today, oh, I want to cover the fathers. Yeah. Yeah. Because no one else is going to do it. If the church isn't dedicated to changing people's lives, then what good is the church? I mean, I get salvation. Yes, I get it. But let's break some chains and curses while we're at it. After you get saved, let's work. Let's, let's dig deep into what really made you who you are and why you find yourself alone. And you really don't even trust guys because of what your dad did to you. That's my problem. I can't hang with fellas too tough. Because I don't trust men. I, the model in my life did what he did. So what am I trust you for? You're a man. I don't do that. We need to do the work inside of us to change it, to know that God loves us. And even though some of us don't have a father and some of us have an estranged relationship with our father, some of us don't know where he is. We have two things. One, a God in heaven that loves us and gave his son to die for our sins and wants us to be in his family. And we got a spiritual father in the building Amen. whose call is to shepherd and build and teach and help mold men. Adrian gets together with the men, and we have some real talks. Yes, real talks, because we need that. Yeah, 
Take the time. Share it. When the message comes across the screen, get your tail or get your father. Get whoever in your life is a father and send them to this place. Amen? Amen? Yeah. That's all I wanted to share with y'all this morning. I know I don't preach well, but this is what we're going to do right now. If nowhere else in your life you can't get covered, you're going to get covered in this place today. Yeah. Yeah. So here's what we're going to do. I'm not calling you up here. I'm not calling you up here. What you, I just want my fathers to stand where they are. Just stand where you are. If you're sitting in the section where a father is, stretch your hands towards the fathers. Because this takes community. We're going to come to Christ and we do that and we all did that at some point in our journey of Christianity. And in, in our discipleship we're continuing to develop. But what it takes is the community. Yes. What it takes is the people that are in our life to stretch hands, to lay hands, to cover them. And it doesn't matter if you are a stepfather. It doesn't matter if you're a godfather. I want you to stand in this place. If you are participating in the upbringing of a child in any shape, form, or fashion, I need you to stand in this place. Because God loves fathers. God loves fathers. And despite your flaws, despite what you've discounted yourself for the wrong that you've done, despite the guilt that you carry, Despite the circumstances, God loves fathers. Yes. He loves us so much that he gave Jesus Christ for our life. Hallelujah. He gave Jesus for us to undo the wrong, yeah. to help mend the heart, to heal the sick. God did that for all of us. So as your hands are stretched towards him right now, I just want to lift you all up. Father, in the name of Jesus, I just pray for these men who have stood up. I pray for the weight that the culture has put on them. I pray for the enemy to be silenced in their life. I pray that they are able to come out of this place feeling covered and renewed. God, let your anointing drip on them to do what it is they can do. Many of them are being fathers without being trained because they didn't have one. Or it was estranged or it was toxic. But Jesus came and wrecked all of that. Jesus was shown to be a savior. Jesus was shown to cleanse us from our wrongdoing, from the generational curses. You are able to do it, God. So I pray for the heart of the men in this place. I pray for the people surrounding and stretching their hands towards the Father in this place. That they might continue to see the responsibility in building men up. That they might continue to see that the enemy's good at what he does. And when he strikes the head of the household, the whole house goes bananas. God, so give us... A spirit of responsibility Jesus. and accountability yes. that we might lift our fathers, that we might cover them, yes. that when we come across a Noah that we can still cover and pray them despite their yes. flaws. Yes. God, I pray for the estranged fathers in this place. Yes. Those that have children that they're not in relationship with, I pray that you correct that. Yes. I pray that you just open the door for an opportunity to begin the work. Yes. That it will take to undo what has been done. God, I pray for the release of guilt. I pray for the release of feelings of inadequacy. That somehow they're not qualified to be a father. I give them the spirit of stick to -itiveness. That they might see this journey as a father to be a lifelong endeavor. That they might... Ask for the oil. Yes. That they would ask for the covering. Yes. That they would break down the walls of isolation in their own life. Yes. I pray that we can look around this room and hold each other accountable as yes. men. Yes. That we can reach and grab a hand. That we can give each other a hug. That if we need to cry, we can cry. That we can yes. get ourselves together in the company of our tent. Yes. Amongst those who would cover us and not expose us. God, please just be with them today. They're going to leave this place at some point today and go back to their lives. I pray this word, if it has been what you desired it to be, that you lock it in their heart. That when the challenges come this week, this word is brought to their remembrance. I pray that you show them that they're all that you need them to be. Already, and that you love them. And because we are loved, we can love. We can love the children in our place. We can love the wives. We can love 
our significant others. We can do all things through Christ. Yes. Let us find our foundation in him, in his life and in his death and in his resurrection. Let us find a strong tower in Christ through whom all things are possible. God, I pray that this rests on them today as they leave this place. As you open your eyes and look around the room, men, look at each other. Look at each other. Every Sunday, you have a responsibility to either track them down or to see how they're doing. Track them down or see how they're doing because we're not going to offer it to each other. We're not going to come in this place and pour our guts out. We need to ask and inquire of each other. Let us minister to one another. Amen. Amen. Father, I just thank you right now for your word. God, I thank you that you can send a word through an unlikely story like Noah and Ham's. God, I pray for those who are under a curse now. I pray for the women in this place who may have felt out of place this morning for hearing this word, but I pray that it ministers to them, that they can start to cover the men in their lives. Whether their fathers are around, whether they're alive, whether they're in the picture, it doesn't matter. Everyone knows a father that they can cover. God, so give the women in this place the fortification to be able to discern and do what it is that Ham did not do. Let us cover our fathers. For it's in Jesus' name we pray, and we all said, Amen, Amen, Amen and Amen. Okay. Did y'all learn something? Okay. I'll encourage you that when this comes out, uh, when Tyrell sends it out on the New Vision Mobile, that you share this with three fathers. Amen. Share with three fathers. Share it with three people who you know have an estranged relationship with their father. Because the church is being called back into order. And this is ministering to the hearts of men. Amen? Amen. The story of Noah and Ham and Canaan and you know the rest of his brothers, this is just an historical example of what can go wrong when we're not in alignment. So I pray that you take the time to send this to a handful of the folks that you know. Amen? Amen. Is that everything? Y'all good? Oh, yes. Put your hands together for First Lady Monica. Sure.